last month we talked about, I talked about being greater and having God move us to a new level. Amen. This month I'm actually going to talk about having the next next level, next direction, and what God has for us uh, and for you uh, this coming, I'm just getting my Bible here, this coming month uh, and this coming year maybe, uh, maybe God is shifting certain things in our lives. Maybe God is doing some things and what used to be is no longer. And the thing that that, uh, we once expected to return will no longer return. That the things that we that we held on to that has been part of our tradition, part of who we are, part of our makeup, part of our weekly schedule may, may, may change just because the pandemic, this crisis has brought on a different type of newness, a different type of, uh, of feel. Uh, crisis often bring us to a new normal and maybe the normal that we have now is different. And we're talking about last week, last month about being greater. Having God use us for greater things, doing greater, greater, greater works for Him. What we don't, we may not understand is that that may mean that may mean a totally different look for us. It may mean a totally different, uh, totally different look for you and I. And so we have to be ready because nothing is going to be ever is going to ever be the same again. After this pandemic, I mean, you think about it, Disneyland, baseball, football, basketball, is it ever going to be the same? Are we going to see the same things that we saw in 2019? Is it ever going to be the same again with the masks on and their social distancing? We were ever, were, will we ever go back going into a bodega? <laughs> Wherever we are in a local, in a, in a local store where everybody's packed to the brim, is there ever going to be a time when there is going to be no line outside of Costco, right? And we're waiting twenty minutes to get in. Is there ever going to be a time where we're not mandated to wear masks and where even our gatherings in the church building is the same? Is there ever going to be a time like that? And we've got to be a people that know how to switch it up. We've got to be able to know how to level up and look at what God is doing in a different season. Sometimes we think that a new season will bring us new things, but our expectation is not new. We think that new looks like the old, and sometimes it's not. I want to talk this month with us about the next level. Amen. Next level. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the new you, the new look you, okay? The new look you, uh, praise the Lord. Some of you seen a picture of me (laughs) online with me uh, from last Sunday. I was wearing a nice sweater, but I was wearing pajamas uh, (laughs) for pants. I don't know if you do the same, if you're wearing pajamas right now. I have no idea. Sister, sister, uh, um, sister Anna Maria have pictures of her with a nice blouse on because she would have Zoom meeting for her, for her business, and then she had pajamas underneath. It was hilarious, <clears throat> and maybe, maybe that's that, that's 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 the different things, right? So a new look, you. I want to talk today about a new you, and if you have your Bibles with you, praise the Lord. Let's turn to the book of John. Chapter 3, John chapter 3, um, reading from the story of Jesus, Nicodemus meeting him and asking him about the kingdom of heaven. Let's read it. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your amazing power and your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're about to do. Thank you, Father, for your great kindness towards us, your great love, your all-sufficiency. Thank you because we know that without you, nothing is possible. But with you, everything is possible. We know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change, but your method has changed. You and your character and your person has never changed, but your approach to man has changed over time uh, because you meet us where we're at. And we thank you, God, for a God that does not change, who's consistent, hallelujah, but is able to meet us in every different way because we are different. And we thank you for this season, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing, what you're doing in our lives, what you're doing in the world, and what you're doing in the kingdom. I pray that this month you will help me, Lord God, share to your people uh, what you are wanting to do in the next season. And we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. I want to share with us today that there is there is going to be nothing old in the new. There is nothing going to be old in the new. Sometimes when we ask the Lord to bring us something new, we don't expect Him to make it look brand new. Sometimes we think when we ask the Lord for something new, it's just going to be our old job and maybe a higher pay. Maybe it's just going to be our old car, but with a different route to the job. Maybe it's going to be our old house with a different ceiling, whatever it is. It's new, but it's not really new. But one of the things that we find in the scripture is the doctrine of newness. That God, when he makes us new, he makes all things new. Yes, of course, you and I are going to look the same, but there is a change that God brings that people will recognize and realize it's a new person. It's a new you. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night to ask Jesus, what must he do to see and inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Nicodemus says, how can I be born again? Should I be brought into my mother's womb and be rebirth? What do you mean about being this born again? And Jesus said to him, this born again stuff is not about the way you were born into this world. It's about you, what you will be born into the kingdom of God. This new birth experience will change the way you are. You don't have to go back and put on new garments and a new face. This newness will make it that the old life will pass away and the new life would come. In fact, Paul the Apostle, um, Paul the Apostle wrote in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 10, says, If you then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify or kill, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetous, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk some time when you lived in them, but now you also put up all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. 
There is a newness that comes with us that leaves the old life behind. When you and I are born again, the old life is buried. The old life is laid aside. In fact, baptism is one of the incredible part of this salvation experience. Baptism shows to us that the old man is now buried under that water. And we believe that that burial now is a significant spiritual acknowledgement of what's happening on the inside. That we are buried with him, Paul the Apostle wrote in the book of Romans chapter 6, and we are raised to life, back to life. But this life is a different life. It's not the same life that you used to live. It's not the same life that you are comfortable with. It's not the same life that you used to have back in the day. It's a new life. Amen. This life in Christ Jesus is a brand new life. The circles that you used to have, the places that you used to go, the things that you used to think about, the the, the things that you used to watch, the things that you used to enjoy, the things that you used to run to are changed because of this new life. God in the born again experience allows us to enter in even at the age that we enter in. And our lives begin to change. Our thoughts begin to change. Our heart begin to change. Our mouth begins to change. Our actions begin to change. Our behaviors begin to change. All of these things shifts for us and nothing is ever new. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in, 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 in the word of God that the, that the old things are passed away. That behold, all things have become new. That the old things are put to death in Jesus Christ and we rise a new person in Christ Jesus. But oftentimes, like I said, when we think of new, we think of old stuff in new times. The, the, the old things are just going to look the same, only it's going to be new, right? Like, like let's say in the church building. We were before this pandemic, before this, this, this shuttered in and the sheltered in call came in. We were shifting the way we see it in, in, the, in the building. We were going to have chairs in, aligned differently. And though that may look new, it's just a, re, a rehashing, a removing. There's nothing really new about it. It's still, it's still the church. It's still me preaching. It's still Godfrey leading. It's still the old chairs. It's still, it's still, it's still everybody is the same. So it looked different, but it's not really new. And sometimes when we think God in this new season that's coming, in this post-pandemic era, we're thinking, oh, God is doing something new. But in our minds, we're hoping it's not too new. <laughs> We're hoping it doesn't look too new. I hope it's still the old, but only new. But in, in God, new doesn't mean recycle. In God, new doesn't mean refurbished. In God, new doesn't mean re rebooted. In God, new looks new, right? In God, when Godfrey was talking about that time that he was in the hospital... God changed him and shifted him. And he went, yes, it's the same old Godfrey, but the mindset was different. The thought process was different. The focus was different. The approach was different. He no longer sees his life the way he used to see his life because that cancer and him talking to God and making that, that concession with God and that the conversation with God shifted it for him. He can no longer live his life the way he used to live his life because God was doing something new in his life. Somebody shout new. Somebody shout new. new. All right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is new that God wants to do. In this new time, you've got to, you and I've got to expect something totally brand new with God. Something totally brand new in the horizon. 
It may never look the same again. We may never even come back to the building. You don't know and you cannot be shaken and you cannot be shuttered and you cannot be broken because of the new thing that God is doing. Only God knows exactly what the new is going to look like. But we as a people of God have got to get our minds ready and prepared for the new thing that God is doing. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, that Jesus was the new Adam. All right. He was the second Adam. Right. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to 49. We read about Jesus being the new Adam. We read about a new life. We read about a new way. We read about a new approach. Praise the Lord. And nothing looked the same. Jesus, he was called the second Adam because he was also, hallelujah, uh, did not have mother and father because he was God in the flesh, right? But in Jesus Christ, there was the perfection of God in him. Adam was humanity. Adam had faults and failures. And Adam ultimately brought all of mankind to separation from God. But Jesus was doing something new. He was doing something different. He was bringing people back to God. He was reconciling people back to God. He was reconciling people unto himself. God was bringing people to himself in Jesus Christ. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, imputing not their trespasses again. So in Jesus Christ, God was doing something new. In fact, the reason why Jesus was killed, but because he was doing something totally new, the, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and the religious leaders at that time could not accept. God was doing something totally new in the life of, of the Jewish people and ultimately in the world through Jesus Christ. But it was too much for them to receive and to accept. Because we're just like that, right? Something new happens and we're thinking, oh God, I can't shake that. Oh no, I don't know if I can handle that. Oh no, I don't know. I, I like new, but I can't, I, I, I can't do that, you know? Hallelujah. I, imagine if Brother Ben said to Sister Wilma, Wilma, I got something, I got a new vehicle for us. You know what Wilma, and probably if he told me that, you know what we would think? Oh, he's got a new car. It's probably, oh, instead of a Mercedes Benz, maybe it's now a Jaguar, right? <laughs> instead, instead, of a, instead of a truck, maybe he's talking about a convertible. You know, we're, we're, in, our, we're in our season where we can relax and, and roam around now. Maybe, you know, but if Ben comes in with a motorcycle, that's totally brand new, right? That's not, that's not, that's not a car. Uh, that's that's a totally different way of moving around. And I don't know if Wilma might be able to accept a new Jaguar. Maybe she'd even love it. Maybe Wilma would love a new convertible. Maybe she'd like, I like it, babe. I like you traded our old car for this new car, right? We call that. But I don't know if Wilma is going to be like, I'm glad you traded that old car for that motorcycle. I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's a little different for me. I don't know if I'm going to ride that motorcycle. I see Ben in Zoom. <laughs> now, don't, don't get any ideas. I don't want your wife killing me. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, but but uh, <laughs> in the loft over there. Okay. So uh, in, 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 in the things of God, I got I to gotta calm myself down. I'm laughing too much. But uh, in the things of God, sometimes that's our expectation, right? God brings something new. How many of us prayed God brings something new? How many of us prayed, bring something new, right? Amen, right? We, we prayed, bring something new, amen? God, I want something new. I don't want any more of the old stuff. I don't want any more of the old stuff. But in reality, we want a new car. We don't want a new vehicle. We don't want a new way of moving around. But sometimes God uses these moments of crisis to shift totally the way we do the stuff we used to do. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. In, amen. in, in Jeremy's, in Jeremy's uh, career, all right? Right, Sister Jeremy? You, uh, you, you are a realtor. You, you are an agent that show uh, people uh, the, 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 uh, the homes and you show apartment buildings. You show all these people these incredible stuff. And when somebody, if somebody told you before this pandemic, or we're going to do something new. You're going to think, okay, maybe it's the way we're, 
we're handling our clientele. Maybe it's the way we're, we're using the telephone. And if somebody tells you, nope, you're not going to go inside the apartment. You are, you are not even going to meet your clients face to face. You are going to go online and you're going to show the house uh, with nobody there. And, and, and your, your partners or wherever it is, you might be saying, whoa, 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 whoa. I like new, but I'm not sure if I'm down with this. Because it's totally brand new. Could you imagine uh, uh, the, the telehealth situation right now? It's all brand new. Sometimes, like I said, we pray for new things. But we want really old stuff wrapped up in shinier stuff. Amen? We want the old life shifted and covered up with a new look. Not so in the things of God. When you become a believer in Jesus, when you're born again, you're not putting on an old, you're not just putting on new shirt. It, you're not just looking good on Sunday. It's not just you're just putting on a new suit and, and looking like you're saved. No, sir. There's a total change that happens in your life. There's a totally different person that comes out. Your family sees you're new. You will be talking differently. And you will stop cursing. You will stop watching stuff you used to watch. You will stop going to places you used to go to. You will enjoy different things. And you will love God's word. And you will love God's people. And that's something totally brand new to the people around you. They might even say, what happened to you? What's going on with you? What has gotten a hold of you? And obviously you will say, well, I met Jesus. I found him. And he has changed my life completely. That's the born again experience. I believe in this season, God's going to bring something totally brand new. And God has already begun to bring something totally brand new that you and I may not be comfortable with, but it's going to be what God is going to do. And then you and I have got to learn how to appreciate the new thing that God is doing. Like I said, we want something repackaged. We really don't want something brand new. I mean, look at the children of Israel. They wanted out of Egypt. When God took them out of Egypt, you know what they said? Bring us back to Egypt. We didn't want that kind of new. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this is too new. This is too new. We, we've been in Egypt for 400 plus years. Now you have us out of Egypt. Who's going to tell us when to get up? Who's going to tell us what to build? Who's going to tell us how to live our lives? We've been under bondage for so long. We don't know how to live in freedom. We don't know how to live in, 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 in our own timelines. We don't know how to do that. Who's going to do everything? Where are we going to get our food? Who's going to bring us our materials? All this stuff. They were so shook. They thought they wanted to get out of Egypt. And when they did, they said, whoa. Totally brand new. I don't know if I can handle this. I believe that this next season, God's going to do something totally brand new. That even you and I may not be able to handle it. In our mind, you and I may be able to, may be thinking, I don't know if I can handle this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move like this. I don't know if this is going to be for me. I don't know. You're, we're going to sound like the children of Israel talking to each other and be like, I don't know if this is even God. Is this even God? Is this God at all? I don't know. I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Just because you have been so caught up in the old normal that when God does something new, you can't handle it. Hallelujah. So I believe that God has me preaching us today to let you know something new is coming and it may not be what you think it may be. It may not look like what you think it looked like. It may be something totally different and maybe God's going to do something greater in the next season. Maybe God's going to shift your mind. Maybe God's going to shift your thinking. Maybe God's going to shift your living. Maybe God's going to shift your giving. Maybe God's going to shift the way you do stuff among other people, among your friends and your family and your co-workers and even your church folks. Maybe it's going to be different. Somebody say amen. Yesterday I visited, we visited the Verada amen and he had to be up on his veranda and we were in his in his backyard in their backyard and when he finally came down he's in his kitchen and we're in the backyard and there was a, <laughs> there was uh his screen <laughs> dividing both of us right hallelujah and uh, we wanted to say hello we wanted to shake hands we wanted to hug and it was just it was just weird 
<laughs> it was just weird. I'm looking at you guys right now and I'm thinking, man, you know, we, we had some issues this morning, technical issues. Some of you realize that and see that. Um, we had some technical issues and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should go to, to the Galarza's household and we set it up and we think that way. And I'm just thinking what they're thinking. You're a visiting nurse, Pastor Joe. We love you. You're our cousin, uh, but you need to be stepping. <laughs> you need to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you sure you got to put a mask on? You got to, you got to put some PPE, personal protection on because uh, we love you, but I don't know who you've been, been around. It's totally different. It's totally brand new. I'm sure sure if it was the old old way uh godfrey and jeremy and they would have opened the doors jem would probably have cooked something up for me real quick godfrey would have been in the back grilling his stuff you know he getting ready he probably he's giving he, he's probably itching for a chance to cook something for somebody right <laughs> hallelujah and he's probably looking and he's like oh man i got a chance but oh pj's coming i'm gonna hook him up i'm gonna hook him up but we can't do that anymore the old is gone, y'all. The old is gone. And we've got to be ready to shift with what God is doing in this new season. Because it's a new level. It's a new time. Last month, and the month before, we talked about conquering fear. No more fear. This month, last month rather, we talked about getting greater, becoming greater. Why? And I, I didn't think about this season. But why did we shift from fear? No fear. This is God at work. No fear. We talked about have no fear. Don't allow fear to motivate you. Don't allow fear to get a hold of you. Don't allow fear to be the one that, that, that overrides your faith. Don't allow it. Then we talked about greater. Stepping forward. God has given you more. God has, has, has afforded you for greater things. God has greater things in store for you. That God's got things that are ahead of you that you can't even imagine or even think about. And now we're talking about shifting into the new. Because you cannot have fear going into the new if you're going to be successful in the new. You've got to be expect greater if you're going to go into the new expecting that God's going to bless you and God's going to keep you and God's going to advance you. You can have fear. you got to operate in faith in the new. You've got to operate closed eyes in your physical and even in your emotional and open eyes in the spiritual and the divine. you got to open your eyes to the things that God is doing. Keep your eyes, the Word of God said, Colossians said, keep your eyes in heaven. Elevate your thoughts. Elevate your thinking. Look to the Look up to the hills. Check out what is ahead of you instead of what's behind you. Press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Don't look back on the plow because those that are looking back on the plow is not worthy of me, Jesus said. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want to read to us in, first, in, in Luke chapter 5 and I'll be finished. So get ready, Brother Godfrey. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, the Word of God reads to us about Jesus and the parable of the wineskins. Luke chapter 5. Amen. Jesus says, verse 27. 527. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi. It's one of his disciples, soon to be disciple, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. There was great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and their Pharisees murmured against his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto them, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? 
And he said unto them, Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them, No man puts a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new makes a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agrees not with the old. And no man puts new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desires new, for he said the old is better. Jesus said, to them you cannot put new wine into old skins you cannot put new wine into old bottles because the old bottle will not be able to hold on to the fermentation and the 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 uh the the uh the newness of the new wine it has too much gas. It's, 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 it's too potent that, that the old skin will not be able to hold it. So Jesus said, you got to put the new wine into new bottles. You've got to take what is new and you cannot shove it into old ways. You cannot. That's what Jesus said. And today I want to talk to you today in finishing and closing that God is going to do something new with you and God's going to do something new with me and God's going to is doing something new with the church and you and I cannot shove it back into the way we used to you cannot you cannot shove this is a great opportunity to restart great opportunity to think over things Great opportunity to look at your finances and reimagine your finances again. Great opportunity to reimagine your career and think about it again. Great, great, great opportunity to reimagine the way you move around in the world. This is a great time. This is a great time for you to take your time and say, God, if there is new thing that you're coming and that you're bringing, I don't want to bring the old stuff. And I don't want to shove the th new thing. Maybe God got a new career for you. <clears throat> Maybe you all you want is to get back to the old job. But God's got something new for you. Maybe it's not even what you used to do. Maybe it's totally something different. Something that you're uncomfortable with. Something that you have no familiarity with. It's totally brand new. But God is telling to you. I'm going to bless you in this new. I'm going to bless you in this new progress. I'm going to bless you in this new season. I'm going to bless you. Just don't be afraid and think greater. Maybe, maybe God's got something for you when it comes to your family. Maybe he's already doing it now. Back, back before the pandemic, maybe you didn't come home and have a family dinner. Maybe you just went out and ate and you didn't have the family together. But now... Every day, you're starting to have family dinners. It's becoming a norm in your life. You don't want to have to go back to that old life and say, well, I don't know about this. It's time to embrace what God is doing with your family and with yourself and move into the new. Maybe God, God is doing something with your personal walk with Him. Maybe, maybe in this season, you're starting to really study the Word. Maybe you're getting into prayer. Before you were too busy, too much, too much things, too many things were calling your name and vying for your attention. But now everything is shut down and now you only have a focus in mind. Maybe it's time to cut down on the things you used to do when it comes to work. And now you're going to invest in the person that you feel called and led to do. Maybe there are gifts that God has in store for you. Maybe there are gifts that is inside of you. That could not come out because you were always at work. Because you always had to be at a place. But now because the, clo the, 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 the work is closed, now you're getting back 
into the thing that God has for you. It's totally different. It's totally not who you were. It's totally changing everything around you. I want to be the one to make and give the first notice. God's giving and doing something new. Don't try to shove it back into old ways, old thinking, and old habits. God is going to do something brand new. He is already doing it. He's shifting it already. He's, he's changing. I mean, the government has changed. Our local government has changed. The way we, we, we police has changed, right? The way we, we do uh, entertainment has changed. We haven't been, you haven't been back to the movie theater in six weeks when you used to do it every week. Not anymore. Now it's a different time. Let us say amen. I'm going to leave you this, this story. Blockbuster video. You guys remember that? Blockbuster video had several hundred stores. Back when I was growing up in the 90s. The top rated companies when it comes to renting out movies. There was a company, Redbox, that started offering videos as a kiosk, different places. And they looked at it and said, that's a small company. It won't bother us. Then this online streaming began to happen. They said, nobody's going to go there. Everybody likes to have things to handle and things to touch. They were so against the new thinking that because it's been done for years and decades, that their method of doing the stuff will never be out of trend. They thought, been doing this for a long time. We can never be shaken by the new stuff. Well, ultimately, church, what did we find? We find that Netflix and streaming companies have pushed out any business that is trying to provide the type of service that Blockbuster Video used to provide. It was Blockbuster Video's lack of embracing of the new that caused them to belly up. They refused to embrace the new. And because of that, they died. I don't want us to die in this new season. I don't want our connections to die in this new season. I don't want, and I don't want your dreams to die in this new season. I don't want your new opportunities to die in this new season. God does not want you to die in the new season. In fact, I believe God wants you to thrive in the new season. God wants you to go to the next level in this new season. Father, we thank you for you are a wonder-working God. We thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your great kindness. We thank you, God, because I know you're doing things that we did not expect. But Father, you're doing things that we need. And Father, in this time of separation and isolation, I pray you ready us, God, for what you're doing already behind the scenes. The Father, we are not so caught up in trying to get back to the old, that we are excited about seeing what you got for us or what you have for us in the new. Build something great and exciting or build something great and expectation inside of us. It says, God, 
We expect great things, Lord. I don't want to go back to the old way. I don't want to go back to the old life. I don't want to go back to the old way of doing things. I don't want to go back to the old way of thinking. I don't want to go back to the old way of, 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 of even worship and service. God, whatever is new, we want you to bring it to us, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you give us a new spirit. Give us a new heart. Give us a new expectation that we are saying, Lord, hallelujah, whatever it is, God, I'm ready. I'm excited for what you're doing. I'm excited for where we're going. I'm excited for what you're building. I'm excited, God, for the upcoming season. For whatever it is, I know with you in line, with you being the head of our lives, with you being the cornerstone, we are going to make it. And there's nothing, God, that's going to separate us from your love. There's nothing that's going to tear us away from what you're doing. There's nothing, God, that's going to destroy what we're doing, God. You, O oh Lord, are the foundation of our lives. You, O oh Lord, are the maker of our being. You, O oh Lord, are the cause for the way we do and who we are. We know, O oh God, that nothing, nothing, nothing happens without you knowing and not only knowing, allowing things to happen. We know, O oh God, that there's nothing in this life that is going to happen, Father, that will totally shake us up because we are your children. You are our God. We are your people, and we thank you. Oh, loving, great, and mighty God, we are submitted to your purpose and your will for us. Help us, Father. Help us not to desire the new thing, hallelujah, over, uh, help us not to desire the old thing over the new. Help us to desire, Father, your new thing in this new season. And we're going to give you praise. And we're going to give you glory. And we're going to give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.